All right, it is that time. It is the Sephora sale. This is the holiday version of the sale. It starts November 1st, it ends the 11th. I always do a sale video. I always wanna make sure you guys are getting the best products and hopefully not buying any duds, staying away from maybe some of the more trendy or viral products that are maybe getting a lot of hype right now, but we won't see later. And so for this sale, I wanted to give you guys my top 50 products at Sephora right now, just to give you a snapshot of what I'm actually using. These are the products that I would recommend to friends and family. These are the products that have been living in my makeup bag that are sold at Sephora and I have them ranging across different categories. You know, we're getting into sale time and so there's going to be lots of sales. I love shopping the Sephora sale, but there will be tons of other sales going into Black Friday, going into the holidays. So I hope my reviews and swatches will be helpful whether you're shopping now or later. That being said, I will have links down below and also some YouTube shopping links. Those are affiliate links, which do earn me a commission. So if you shop through any of my links, thank you so much. It does support the channel, but no pressure as always with all my stuff. I just want to give you guys the best information so you can shop whenever it's convenient for you if you even decide to and we have 50 products to talk about so let's just get into it starting with primer first thing here if you want a glowy primer I really do love the Valentino one this is the V lighter in the shade Rosa it is a beautiful illuminating primer and the radiance this gives I think is something special and a little different it's not glittery it's not sparkly it just has a beautiful sheen to it and I always describe it as almost this kind of mattified sheen which really works well for my oily skin I want to be glowy but I I also naturally have that and I find that this primer doesn't make me more oily throughout the day which is huge but also the way that this illuminates it doesn't emphasize any texture on me which is really nice it doesn't make my pores look bigger or anything like that so love this primer if you're looking for something illuminating as for like a smoothing primer the hourglass vanish airbrush primer is my go-to I'm someone that has traditionally always used a primer I usually like something hydrating just because my skin is pretty finicky even if it is oily but sometimes you need a smooth and I find that this one is a nice mix I do get a little bit of hydration from this but I also do get those smoothing and slightly blurring effects with it but it doesn't make me feel dry some smoothing and like mattifying primers can make my skin feel really like tight and I don't feel like that's the best canvas to then go in with foundation at least not for me so I feel like this is a nice balance it also doesn't pill on me I feel like so many other mattifying primers or anything with a little bit of slip to it can easily start pilling and just kind of becoming a mess but I find this one's really nice I also do like the new Huda one if you were interested in something else that one's just a little newer so I didn't want to put it in the video I wish so badly I had a foundation to tell you about in this video but I really don't I don't have a lot of base products that I truly trust and I feel like I can tell you guys about but my one tried and true that's at Sephora is the Natasha Denona high glam concealer I wear the shade n2 but this concealer just is so nice on my skin it doesn't matter what condition it's in it always looks good I can use a brush I can use a sponge and it's great. The coverage is amazing and it just gives me such a smooth base. I've gotten so many compliments when I wear this and it's the one base product where if I know I need my foundation to look good, I really wanna make sure that, you know, looking like I know beauty stuff, this is the foundation I'm gonna wear. I also have a lot of dryness around my mouth. My skin can just be in various states and this still works so great. It doesn't look dry at the end of the day, which I really love. I mean, I love that my face looks good at the end of the day. The doe foot applicator also holds quite a bit of product. So I find, especially when it's fresh, I can just use this all around and then blend it out. And one kind of dip is enough for me. I'm telling you this concealer a little bit goes a long way. And to be honest, I actually don't like it under my eyes, usually where I would use concealer, but this one's a little heavy there for me. I don't need that much coverage under my eyes. So I love it on the face though. It is like my number one base product. I think this is my third tube and I probably should get another one soon. For concealers that I actually Actually use as concealers. My go-to has been the Tower 28 Serum Concealer since it came out. Don't mind my sticker that's somehow become on the front, but I use the shade BU, which I believe is the second lightest shade, and I really like this one, especially for under my eyes and kind of dual purposing around the face. If there are certain spots I kind of want a little more coverage with, I will use this, and I like to let it sit a little under my eyes, and I'll go in and do maybe some cream bronzing, cream contouring, and then I will blend this out, and I just think it has really nice coverage. Although this is a serum concealer I wouldn't consider this overly hydrating I actually feel like it has some good pigment and I don't want to say it's drying but it's not like overly tacky and moisturizing in that way which I actually really like so a great concealer and this has lasted me so long a little bit of this goes a long way for sure but if you did want an actual hydrating concealer another one I really love is the house labs this one I like to use more in the winter time or anytime I might need just a little more moisture under my eyes I also feel like the color match in 
and this concealer is so great. It just looks so good. Another one I kind of let sit a little. I just like that technique. I find it lets me get a little bit more coverage when I'm blending out. This one's definitely a lot more creamy, which I think can be really nice, but it can crease a little, which isn't a deal breaker for me, but I will put this on at the beginning. I'll do the rest of my makeup, and then at the end, I'll just take a little Q-tip and kind of get, have this like little crease right under my eye bag, and I'll just take that little bit of extra product that collects, and after I do that, then I'm good. But I still love this, and again, if you need something with a little bit more hydration, I think this is an amazing concealer. The foundation is also really good too. I know I'm like, I don't have a ton, but I have had some good experiences with that foundation. I just have it in too dark of a shade. It's like my summer, summer, summer shade. Now it has me thinking maybe I should get a lighter shade in the Triclone, I think it is, foundation during the sale for myself. Okay, continuing on with base products, I have two powders to talk about. I have traditionally loved the Huda Beauty powder, but I have some different recommendations. That one's still great, but I have some different ones. I finally fall in love with and get the hype around the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder. Although I will argue that translucent, I don't know if that's... <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I find this does leave a little bit of a cast. So for anyone with a super light skin tone, if you've run into problems with that, just something to potentially watch out for. But I feel like this really does help not only smooth, but really set my foundation and make sure that I'm not getting as oily throughout the day. I feel like also for some of my lighter coverage foundations or skin tints, this adds the tiniest bit. Like I said, I feel like there's a little bit of something, like a little bit of a tint going on. And I actually like that because it helps give me a little bit more coverage while also, again, kind of controlling my oil so love this powder and then a newer powder that has captured my heart is this one from makeup forever this is the HD skin setting powder and it is a loose powder but I love that it has a puff in it which is so nice if you're really looking to like blur your skin blur your pores a puff is really gonna help do that it really gets in there and smooths out that texture which is so nice it's a really nice finely milled powder this is the shade 1.1 light vanilla and more than anything this blurs and really gets gets rid of texture, which I love, especially around my pores, on my T-zone, a little on my chin. That's where I love to use it. I do have to touch up with this one a little bit more often. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put the Laura Mercier on like as I'm doing my makeup. And then at the very end, I will just like press a little bit of this powder into my most textured and oily areas. And that's how I get like the most long wear out of it. But for every day, it still works great. And it doesn't leave me overly powdered. As much as I'm oily, I don't want a super powdered look if I can help it. So that's why I tend to to stick with loose powders. I just feel like I can control the amount of powder that I'm getting on my face, depending on, again, the condition of my skin, what other products I'm using, so I can get the best finish. I should have actually talked about this earlier, but I wanted to mention a sunscreen. In the past, I've talked very highly about the Super Goop Glow Screen, I believe it is. It's a tinted and glowy sunscreen that is very glowy, okay? <laughs> It's very glowy and it's actually a sunscreen I like to wear alone. So it's more for specifically like more active activities, but I still want to look a little, you know, done up, not completely bare face. Maybe I'm going to do some errands after. Maybe I'm going to go grab a bite to eat after that type of thing. But that sunscreen does not work well under foundation for me. I find it can be a little finicky. It can pill a little. Like I really do love the kind of healthy glow. And again, I mean glow. It's very glowy, but it has its issues. It's a little heavy. So I tried this one out from In Beauty Pro. Project. This is the Mineral Sun Glow and it comes in two shades. I have the Fair Medium. It's a mineral sunscreen, but this also has a nice glow to it and it is completely different in terms of texture. This one's a lot thinner. It's more like a normal moisturizer with a nice amount of glow, but nothing like Tin Man. It doesn't make you look like... <laughs> metallic almost like the super goop one can so i really love this and i find it works really well under makeup and it also doesn't have that same pilling issue so i wanted to shout this out in case it's tough for you to find sunscreens which i get it's very difficult for me to find sunscreens that don't make me more oily throughout the day i find for a nice glowy one this one actually works under makeup for me i only have one brow product on my list that i really wanted to mention to you guys this is a newer one for me i usually keep it the same with my brow products but this one i I've really been enjoying and it's funny because when I first tried this first impressions I was like what the heck because it's kind of goopy like it's a goopy brow product but this is from Lawless it's the hold up soft set creamy brow wax and I think that's a perfect name for it it's a creamy brow wax so it doesn't set hard but if you spoolie this in and kind of put a decent amount in it's pretty translucent overall so yes it gives me a little bit of a tint and on my most basic days I could get away with just doing this but I tend to do more because my brows are blonde and I like a little bit 
little bit more definition. Anyway, when I really work this into my brows, I love the kind of definition it gives to the hairs, even if it's not doing it with color. That soft wax is a really nice base to then go in and define a little bit more with a pencil. And then if I'm being extra, extra, I will then go in with another tinted brow product just to kind of define even more of those hairs that have been softly set with this wax. More than anything, I like that the hold is there, but it's not crispy. It's not set in place completely firmly, which sometimes you want, but sometimes it's okay for it just to be enough, you know, not just like fluffy brow hairs doing whatever, but also not like rock hard brow hairs. This is the in-between I didn't really know I needed. So I've really, really been loving this. And I feel like there's a lot of product in there. And since it's like a squeeze tube, I can kind of like squeeze it out on the brush as I need. Okay, I'm putting this in here because I feel like this is a foundational product, although it's not on your face. It's really like a tool. If you're looking for a sharpener, the Glossier one is the best one. I'm pretty sure it was back in stock. I hope it's not sold out already, but this is just so pretty first off. It's the prettiest pencil sharpener, but also I love that it holds so much product. It looks nice if you're gonna keep it out on your vanity. It sharpens everything with ease. I don't know, I'm just saying I love this. It was a part of the Glossier play line a long time ago, and then that was gone. So I was like holding onto mine for forever. I loved it so much, and I'm just glad they brought it back. I feel like sometimes things like this go overlooked. Like, yeah, we get a new blush, but we have like a million blushes, but sometimes you just need like a good pencil sharpener, and this, I'm telling you, is the one. This is the best. Segwaying us into blushes, of course I have a ton of blushes to talk about, so let's start with cream. If you would have told me I would be talking about an It Cosmetic Cream blush, I don't know if I'd believe you like a year ago, but this sun blush from them is such a good formula. First off, it's huge. There's so much, so much product in here. 18 grams, 18 grams of product. I don't know, man, it's huge. A lot of the times when you're getting a blush in a jar like this, it's like a small one, but this one's massive. Anyway, this is the shade 03. I bought this one, but then they later sent me two of the other shades. So I'll have some swatches, but 30, sun warmth. I think I said 03, but it's number 30 or the third shade, sun warmth is my favorite. It looks so good. It's one of those burnt terracotta kind of shades. That being said, even though this shade is my favorite, really what stands out is this formula. It's a thin cream that feels almost kind of watery to the touch initially, but again, it's nice and thin and it dries down so you don't feel a tackiness on your cheek in any way. You guys know me, I love to use my BK Beauty angled blush brush for applying like any cream blush. But what I also love about this formula is it does leave a little bit of a glow. There is something almost like a sheen to this, but again, it's not actually tacky. It's just the way the formula is. This actually really reminds me of the Phytosurgeons. If you know some indie makeup brands, Phytosurgeons has some beautiful cream blushes. Highly recommend you checking those out if you haven't, because there are some really beautiful colors. And I feel like the It Cosmetics range is like all very warm and like the same color, just different depths, but it's a great formula nonetheless. I hope they come out with more colors. Like it is so good. I highly recommend you checking it out. Pretty dang pigmented as well. I like to tap off on the back of my hand first and then go in and build up as I need to. But I can't lie, I love this formula. I think it's so good, but I also love the Phytosurgeons formula, so it makes sense. Another cream formula I love and I've talked about before, this is the Bobbi Brown Pot Rouge. This is actually for lips and cheeks, but my favorite shade is the Powder Pink. I have a few other ones. Now is that Powder Pink? I don't know. It looks like terracotta. It looks like the last shade. If you can't tell, I like the same blush color. I love something that has a little bit of like ruddiness to it, some neutrality to it, but a little bit of actual color. I just find that flush adds a little bit of life to my cheeks and usually that's what I'm wanting with a blush. Formula on this though is very different than the It Cosmetics. That one's thin and dries down. This one's definitely a little bit thicker. It's almost like a melted down lip gloss lipstick combo, which sounds kind of scary and yeah, it has a little bit of tack to it. I mean, you can thin it out. It doesn't feel like super tacky on the cheeks, but I feel like it has a little bit more grip to it. So I feel like this can work for oily skin or dry skin kind of across the board. And you can use it on your lips if you want to, to kind of do a monochromatic look. It's just so good. And it was one of those blushes I wasn't expecting to love. Like swatching it, I was like, Okay, I don't know if this is gonna be for me, but I think it looks so good and it does add almost a gloss to my cheeks as well. But again, not too sticky, not too sticky. Just kind of healthy, which I love. I couldn't do this video without mentioning a lot of Westman Atelier products. I have just been exploring the brand more recently this year and I just 
I love everything I've tried basically, which is bittersweet because it's very expensive, but I guess with the sale, you could save a little bit of money. The cream blush from them is such a great formula. If you're looking for more of a cream to powder, something a little bit more dry, I feel like, but still creamy, still blendable, just not gonna leave a sheen like that. I feel like these are the blushes for you. They are just beautiful. And specifically, I'm holding up the trio that came out for holiday. I already had a few blushes, but when I saw that set, I was so excited. So I picked that up. I believe it has two shades that are already existing, Mimi and Petal. And I want to say Pop It is new. It's like this kind of punchy hot pink, which is really beautiful. It's super easy to work with, really elegant on my skin. I can take it straight from the stick, blend it out with a brush, or I can take my brush and kind of put it on the stick and then apply that way. Either way works great. Just so good. I have a lot of the colors and I will say they pull all a little bit warm. So I don't think you need everything, but I have an obsession. Okay, I have an obsession. I really love these and I love that they offer some smaller sizes too. So if you're interested but don't wanna spend the full amount, it might be nice to just get a smaller mini size and see if the formula works for you. I will say though, I hope that they come out with some more colors, expand the shade range. We need some deeper shades. We need some different shades because they kind of blend out similarly, but I can't deny the formula is beautiful and all of these colors like look so great. I really love them. Definitely a really nice luxury cream blush formula. I think last for cream blushes, but this can kind of go into highlighter territory. So, you know, use it how you want to, but this is from Danessa Myricks. This is the Yummy Skin Balm Powder, but it's the low lighters. There are four different shades and this one's Unbothered, which is specifically my favorite. I also have this peachy one that's beautiful. Like I said, I love using this as like a hybrid highlighter and blush combo. I'm wearing it today. I'm wearing a few different products. So everything that I'm talking about is on my face in some way or another. Not all 50 products, but I just mean to do this face, I used products that were here only. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I really love that this has a little bit of that iridescence almost, but not too much. So it's not like, whoa, a purple cheeks flashing in the right light, but there's something a little more interesting. It just like, it's ballet core, baby. I don't know. That's what I get with this. It just makes me feel like super girly and like reminds me of all the bows that are popular right now. But I love putting this on and kind of blending in blush and highlighter together. Sometimes I will use it alone, but I think it's nice just kind of topped over as an extra step at the end of my looks. It's just really pretty. I really love it. And actually reminds me of another Westman Atelier product, which I will be talking about, but this is like the cheaper version. I think this is like $25. So I'm kind of talking about it backwards, but I'll tell you which one I feel like this is similar to more in what they do than the exact formula or the exact color. But if you're looking for a similar effect, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself because we still have some more blushes. My real and true obsession has also been these Gucci blushes. Okay. I got this one, which isn't even my normal shade. This is radiant pink. It's also what I'm wearing today. And this is just to me like, oh, that's that basic pink color. That's what I think. But this looks so good. The formula of these blushes is really nice. It's buildable pigment, which I really enjoy. That way I can kind of control it and build it up however I want. It also has the tiniest amount of shimmer to it. It's not glittery. It's not sparkly though. It's more of a nice sheen, which is just perfect. It adds some life without emphasizing texture. So if you're looking for something that's not matte, but you don't want it to show off all your pores and show off every freaking little bit of texture you have on your cheeks. This is gonna be a great formula for that. And although this is basic, I really feel like it gives that perfect pop of pink on my cheeks. So I love this. And because I love that one so much, the holiday blushes that come out, I decided to try them both. Now I will say this one's soft peach, which is really pretty. It's like a nice peachy neutral color. It doesn't give me as much color as I would like, at least what I'm into right now. But if you love a neutral blush, you'll probably like this. The one, which I was going back and forth because I was like, do I really need to blush it like two of them girl get it together just pick one but I couldn't I got both and intense ruby has been my favorite again we have some nice buildable pigment so although this is definitely you know a stronger pigment than the pink one I can use a fluffy brush and just get that really nice windswept kind of look you know that pink look you can get from like being out in the cold I feel like that's what intense ruby gives me and I've been loving it especially at the end of my looks where I feel like sometimes my blush can get eaten up by the rest of my makeup when I finish everything everything, you know, and I just want to add that little bit of life back that little pop back I've been using this and loving it. So love these blushes I don't want to say it, but I'll probably pick up another shade I want to swatch them in store though Make sure I pick the right one I just love this formula and if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper and something I've really liked in the past I do feel like they're similar to the Clinique cheek pop blushes Those also have like a slight sheen to them. They're not completely matte, but they're not like shimmery So that could be an option for you if you're looking for something similar. Okay last blush. I promise 
honest, but I've just had so much fun. Even though blush, I swear, looks the same on me, I have so many videos where I'm like applying blush with you guys, and sometimes the differences are minimal, but I do love a nice blushy look, especially since I've been going a little lighter on my eye looks lately. And if you're looking for a matte powder blush, I feel like the House Labs one is just a solid pick. My favorite shade, <laughs> can you tell I have a fucking type? Can you tell? <laughs> anyway, this is French Rosette, and these are very blurring. If you're like, I want no texture. I want it to be almost like how the Makeup Forever powder I talked about is. This blush will like blur your cheeks. They almost look a little, I don't wanna say powdery because it's not a bad thing, but they look like little angel cheeks. It's like, where is the texture? Like, do you have a filter on right now? That's kind of the effect that these give. So if you're looking for a matte blush, I feel like these are still really blendable. And there are also some really fun colors. I have the watermelon one. I have the dragon fruit one, which is that like hot baby pink. And I feel like all of them are really pretty and just great quality products. I feel like a lot of the house lab stuff is very good quality, especially with that rebrand. Thank God we had the rebrand because they are putting out some really nice products. Don't mind me just touching up my lip gloss. You know, when you're talking this long, you gotta check, you gotta check even your favorite lip products. When your mouth is dry and you're just chatting about, it can get dicey. <laughs> okay, I wanna continue with more cheek products, bronzers, some highlighters, that kind of stuff. Actually, I realized that the lighting was completely different, so I made a small change. Hopefully it looks okay. But now some bronzer type products and like highlighters. I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet. This is the Kosas bronzer. This is the only powder bronzer I put in here. I've actually been loving tons of other bronzers, but this is like my tried and true. If you've been here you know I love this thing this is the Sun Show bronzer in waves it's baked and has a little bit of shimmer to it so if you're not into that then it might not be for you but I love that I feel like it's so easy and even if I don't put any like cream down as a base cream is in another cream bronzer I feel like this just looks so good it gives me a little bit of warmth to my face it gives me a little bit of life back once I add a little bit of foundation I just love it I will say I want to just warn you if you're super sensitive to smell this does have kind of a I I don't know, crayon-y kind of smell. That's just the way it smells, unfortunately. I hate it, I wish it didn't, but I've gotten over it. I've panned this, used it up, bought a new one. Like, I love this thing. I will continue to use it. I continue to love it, so I have to shout it out. It's just easy to use, and that's what I want in a bronzer, because it can go wrong really fast. For a cream bronzer, another one you guys know I love. I know, sometimes I'm like a broken record, but I also feel like that's because, you know, makeup takes a long time, one, to use up, okay? It takes a long time to use up, and there are a lot of great products out there but you know sometimes something just works for you and it's good to just stick with it and that's how I feel about this NARS bronzer this is the Laguna cream bronzer and I just love this if you're looking for that kind of Hollywood model kind of bronze that just looks effortless like it doesn't look like bronzer it just looks like wow they just look so good in tan and bronze I feel like that's what I get with this it's so easy to blend in it's like this almost kind of cream to powder kind of finish it blends itself and I also find that this color isn't too stark on me so it really blends in really easily as well there's no like harsh edges without me even trying so I mean I have pan in here the pan is expanding I just I love this this one also has a smell though all my bronzers smell this one has more of like a white floral kind of beachy smell to it which I don't mind and I honestly didn't even notice until some of you guys were commenting about it and then I'm like yeah yes it does it smells kind of perfumey it's kind of nice but I could see people also being turned off from that so I just want to mention it here just in case but it's a beautiful product love Love, love, love this bronzer. And last, the kind of bronzer. I mean, it's a contour technically, but I use it more like a bronzer. This is another Westman Atelier product. This is the contour stick in the shade Biscuit. I just have the mini here. I just wanted to try it out and see how I would like it. And it's a similar formula, if not the same formula as the cream blushes. So I just think it's so easy to blend out, even though this one is a little bit more pigment. And although this is a contour, it's just, it still blends out a little warm, at least on me. Like, I still feel like this just looks like a deeper bronzer bronzer to me. So that's kind of how I use it. I do get a more sculpted look when I use this than something like the NARS one. So if I'm wanting to look a little bit just more you know, uh, I feel like this one does that for me. It's more of like a going out kind of product, at least for me. I really love it though, and I've been enjoying this little mini. I'm telling you, the Westman Atelier products have a chokehold on me. And that will segue us into the last one. This is the Peau de Peche highlighter. And again, this is the one that I felt like is similar to the Danessa Myricks. It's that kind of like blush, bronzer, highlighter, like what is it? It could be everything. And specifically this Peau de Peche one, oh, it is just a beautiful color. I find this adds like almost a 
bronzy look to my skin, a little bit of a sheen, and the pearl on this is so pretty. It's nice and fine. I wouldn't say that it's sparkly, but it also isn't like a flat sheen either. It's just so beautiful. And the formula is a cream, but a little slippy. So I'll just take my brush, go right in. And this is something I use kind of topping over. If I already have some blush and bronzer down, this will add that little bit of highlight and kind of blend everything together. I also like using it alone though, again, on really simple, easy looks. It's just beautiful. The compact is heavy, which is nice as well. I do really like this. But again, if you're looking for something similar, I feel like the Danessa Myricks offers a similar look to this with different colors. And also that formula is just a little bit more stiff and kind of putty like this is more a cream with like a 25% putty that one's more like a true putty kind of texture I did want to mention some powder highlighters although I will say I have not been highlighting nearly as often and I feel like my choices kind of reflect that highlighter is something I've loved for a really long time I love the way it looks but I haven't been drawn to putting it on everything I've been doing has just been more low-key it's more practical I'm really just doing makeup to feel good to look good to go out into the world and do what I got to do type of thing. And I just haven't been feeling the need for highlighter as much, but when I have, these are the ones I've been liking for something a little more subtle, which normally is not my thing. I like the sparkle. I like, you know, something even a little glittery, I would say when it comes to highlighter. And not that I don't like that at all, but I really wanted this again to be more recommendations of things I'm actually using right now. Not things I've liked in the past, but like what is in my current makeup bag? Like what is the makeup that I'm having to like pry out of my hands? and switch things out to try new makeup. And recently I did like a shop my stash type of thing and I put the Give Beauty highlighter. This is the Platinum Cowgirl Check My Glow Illuminator. And when I first got this, I was like, oh, it's kind of powdery. It doesn't have that much glow to it. Tell me why now I'm like, ooh, this is the perfect amount of glow. It's almost like, you know, it's still a lot to me. Like I would not even count this as like super, super subtle, even though I know in the actual range of highlighters, it is subtle, but it is beautiful. It doesn't have sparkle, but it just gives you a nice sheen. I do have it on today. <laughs> I layered products, okay? I was like, I'm doing a lot. It's just beautiful and it's also multifunctional. I will also use this on like my brow bone, which is really easy kind of to buff things out. It's just a nice highlighter if you wanna add a little bit of glow, a little bit of light without adding like sparkle and like frost. If you are looking for something a little bit frostier, a little bit more sparkly, a tried and true for me has been this Bobbi Brown Pink Glow. I mean, it's pretty nasty in here. I love a Bobbi Brown product, I can't lie. I just feel like they're really well done formulas. And I feel like the formulations are also really timeless as well. This is a baked formula. So I just love that. I think there's a lot of control. You can use it wet. You can use it dry. You can build it up. And depending on the density of your brush, you can get different applications for it. So this one is a little more metallic. It does have a little bit more sparkle to it. I also like the shade Quartz Glow. I have that one too. If you want a little more impact from your highlighter, but still want something that just like looks good on the skin. And although highlighters naturally are going to give a little more texture, I feel like this formula does it in an elegant way. I would check this one out. And also specifically Pink Glow is another one that kind of works well as like this blush highlighter hybrid. This doesn't have a ton of color to it, but I do feel like it helps blend blush and highlighter because it's a little bit deeper on my skin and it has a bit of a pink tinge to it, which I think works really well. So I love this. All right, are you guys with me? Are you still with me? We have eyeshadow to do next, which as much as I do something a lot more simple now, I do a lot of one shadow, two shadow looks. I still love eyeshadow. I love the way it looks. I just don't do heavier or deeper eyeshadow looks, but I have some eyeshadow favorites, so let's get into them. For those of you who have been here, you knew stick shadows were coming. So again, I'm gonna keep it short. I swear, you probably could go back through the last like two Sephora sale videos I've done, and I probably mentioned these, but... I'm doing it again, okay? I think that it shows I'm consistent. If nothing else, I'm consistent and I like the things I like, okay? I feel like the go-to shadow sticks for me are the Laura Mercier and the Bobbi Brown. I just feel like you can't go wrong with these and they have tons of shades. So for Bobbi Brown, I have the most of these and there are just tons of different ones. They have matte ones, they have shimmer ones, they have varying shimmers. The Moonstone shade that I have is a lot more glittery and doesn't have as much base pigment to it. Some of them are more satin. For specific colors I really like, I like soft bronze a lot and I also really like the shade stone. I'm not sure if that one sold at Sephora. There's always limited edition colors and all that stuff but I just feel like in general it's a really solid stick shadow formulation that isn't too metallic. I feel like we've been seeing a lot more stick shadows which I love to see but sometimes they're trying to do a little too much pigment, a little too much metallic that I just don't know if I like as much. I like something a little bit more subtle and I tend to use these shadows as either one and done shades where I'm just like out the door super fast or as basic 
bases for other eyeshadow looks, so I don't necessarily need these to always bring everything for me. From Laura Mercier, I find it, I don't know, to me, the Laura Mercier and Bobbi Brown are pretty similar formulas. Let me know what you find the differences are. I feel like they both lock down in a nice way and tend to be, I think, a little bit more forgiving overall on the eyes, depending on, you know, what age you are and what kind of texture your eyelid might have. But I really love Moonlight. This one's a little bit more on the metallic side, I feel like, for Laura Mercier, but this is a really beautiful kind of classic color from them and it's like that taupey shade which I love I love a good taupe okay if I love a terracotta blush and a taupe eyeshadow that's all I need okay that's all I need in like a little mauve rose uh, lip liner and then as a specific shadow stick recommendation I do have the hourglass shadow stick in prism I do like the other shades I have a few of the other shades but prism is like my girl okay prism is the one I love to use it's kind of this rose gold but it's not overly warm so it just works as a perfect base for things and it also is just this like nice illuminating cream shadow on my lid that's super easy to do so I love this and it's another one that doesn't have too much sparkle and it doesn't show texture on my eyelid I think it's really forgiving in that way so I love that about it for a few other cream shadows I have this one from Charlotte Tilbury another one you've probably heard me talk about the eyes to mesmerize specifically I have here this is oyster pearl and this is another one that back in the day would have been like it's just satin it doesn't have sparkle it doesn't have whatever but I love that now I just think that tiny bit of shine without being like sparkle can look so elegant and so great it can kind of wake your eyes up a little but it's not like overtaking the look it's not like you know screaming for attention on your face and again look at that it's like a taupey shade you know what I mean it's one of those taupey shades where when it's in the light it looks lighter but then when the light isn't hitting it it has a little more depth to it so as a one and done eyeshadow it works really well for giving you kind of a multi-dimensional look without being actually like iridescent or being like a duochrome or multi-chrome I have a few other shades that are limited edition I think oyster pearl though is part of the permanent line and it is one of my favorites I like the exaggerized one that came out a while ago I wish you would bring that one back but in general I've really liked the eyes to mesmerize as one shadow look okay this one guys I know you haven't heard me talk about because it's a new one and I question putting it in here but I have used it so many times and for me to like a liquid eyeshadow unheard of okay like I just find them so hard to use but this Armani eye tint first off check the color <laughs> It's so pretty. It's kind of that taupey shade, but this actually has a lot of sparkle in it and not a ton of base. You can build it up a little bit. This is the shade 67S. I also have another shade that they sent and I'm excited to try that one. But this one I wanted to put in here because it has that kind of moon dust shadow, that kind of wet sparkle look. But because it's a liquid, it locks down in a different way than I find creams do or powder eyeshadows do. And if you don't like fallout, but want that sparkle, I think this could be a really good option. And one of the things I've hated about liquid with shadows is that they can get just like crusty on your eye so fast like it can just Ugh, be a bad situation so fast. You can't really layer them, but I can get two layers of this. But you don't even need to because the whole point about it is to get that sparkle. It's actually the main sparkle that I have on my lids today. I just have been loving this. And for me, again, to be into a liquid eyeshadow, I was just not expecting it. I was honestly just trying this because I was like, I should try it. I should just give it a chance. And I am really into it. So if you wanted a liquid version of like the moon dust shadow, something like that, like the space cowboy or whatever it is, from Urban Decay. This one might be one to try. I haven't, you know, vetted the other colors. I have some other swatches. So, you know, let me know if you've tried other colors of the eye tint, which ones are good, or if you have experience with them, but I have some high hopes and I'm excited to try those. But specifically 67S for that sparkle is beautiful. Now, to be honest, I've been loving those little tiny potted eyeshadows, the stick shadows, the single shadows. I'm excited to try the Patrick Todd duos. As soon as they come to me, you guys, I will be working on that. But I do feel like palettes can be a really great way to to save some money on eyeshadow if you like doing bigger looks. It has everything you could need. So I did want to still mention a few of these because I still reach for these for sure. I just tend to do more simple looks and I'm not using as many shades at once. I know I was just talking about the Moon Dust Shadows from Urban Decay and I really like those as singles. If you know you have one shade, it could be a really great deal and I've seen them go on good sales. So honestly, keep your eye out for like Black Friday sales. Anyway, if you're not looking for a single though, I have really enjoyed this palette. I know it's basic, I know, but it's so good. <laughs> this is the holiday palette that came out from Urban Decay that's exclusive to Sephora. They also have a star palette at Ulta and I like that one too. It has some mattes in it, which can be nice, but I feel like this quad, I love that it's just simple. I love that I can see the shadows. So like within my whole makeup collection, I know what it is. I'm not like forgetting about it. And it just has that classic moon dust formula. If you don't know about this, it's like that wet shine kind of sheer base overall. This kind of bronzy shade actually isn't super sparkly, but I kind of love that. It has that kind of satin 
and look to it. It reminds me actually of the Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow in Exaggerate. What the f When I'm saying this right now, I'm like, are you with me? Are you this into it? Are you this deep into it that you don't even know what the hell I'm saying right now? But anyway, the limited edition <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury shade that's called Exaggerize that came out in the cream eyes to mesmerize that I just talked about. Anyway, it reminds me of that, but in a shadow form, okay? That's all I was trying to fucking say. I just love this. It does lean a little bit pink. If you have a lot of the Munda shadows, it's kind of similar to them, but I love it. I can't lie. The main shade I like to use in here though, and I feel like the best one is the Space Cowboy Rides again. That's kind of that classic, really sparkly moon dust formula where there's not a bunch of base pigment and it's gonna have that wet look on your eyelids. I love using it as a topper shade or on its own, but I think it can look really nice, just kind of scattered on top of any eyeshadow look if you wanna kind of glam it up, sparkle it up. This other pink one's similar to that, but it has more of like a pinky base on it. And then this one here is the one I use the least, but I still feel like it has a lot of value and I've really, I've really been enjoying this quad. And you know, spoiler for my holiday video, but I like this quad I think more than the star, just because it's a little more compact and although I like that star packaging, it's a little flimsy, a little finicky. I definitely wanna mention some neutral eyeshadow palettes. That's been more my jam than color shadows. It just has been, I've had my colorful moments. I'm sure I will return to them at some point, but for neutrals, I wanted to bring up these two palettes. They're both Natasha Denona. I do have a code with Natasha Denona on their website. So depending on what discount you get at Sephora, that could be an option for you as well. That's affiliated to no pressure as always again, but I want wanted to throw that out there just in case you only get the 10% off during the Sephora sale. And also Black Friday is coming up. They might have some sales over on Natasha Denona. So something to consider, but I love that I need a nude, okay? It came out last year and it's still like a staple staple in my collection. I love this color story. This is like every eyeshadow I need. Very monochromatic in a lot of ways, but also these are the shadows I actually wear. So for my skin tone, for my preferences, this is definitely like my shit. This is like what I love, 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 love. Love, 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 love this palette. I have a whole video on it. If you wanna see it compared to other Natasha Denona palettes, just check out the channel. There's a lot of videos and I feel like I talk about a lot of these products. Other palette in here though is the I Need a Warm, which to be honest, when this was announced, I was kind of just like, oh whatever, who needs it, I don't know. I was just, I'm not that into warm shadows. I like something more neutral or even kind of cool leaning, but this has been so pretty. I actually really love it. It's reminding me, oh yeah, there are some really great warm shadows out there. It also has a fun duochrome and it's kind of this perfect transition where it works for summer, but it works for fall looks as well. So I really have been enjoying that one. That one's been in my rotation a lot since it came out. And you know, I just had to mention a few new palettes. If you're looking for like, what are the newest eyeshadow palettes on the market. I wanted to put some swatches in here and give you a few thoughts on the new one. So I have the Makeup by Mario Moonlight Etherealized Palette, which is more cool toned. It has some of those like topper sparkly shades in it with like this navy blue, really pretty. I talked about it in my last video. So if you wanna see some looks, if you wanna hear more of my thoughts, I would definitely check that video out. But at the end of the day, I feel like if you like the original Etherealized Palette that came out and you like this color story, I think you would really like this palette. The mattes in there are super blendable. It's great for like one two shadow looks and again the sparkly shades in there have a really nice high-end like luxurious feel it's a very fine sparkle especially compared even to the urban decay those have a little more of a chunkiness to them the makeup by mario are a little bit more refined and then i do have the icy nude palette from huda this is her last big palette i'm hoping to get a video up on this i have a lot of videos in the works so hopefully i can do that and i've only used this a few times so i don't want to be like this is the best but i did want to at least get you some swatches of it since it's like one of the new palettes Palettes. And this does look very similar in tone to the I Need a Nude palette from Natasha Denona. So I was very interested in it. I'll put a side by side up so you can kind of see what they look like next to each other. So far though, I will say the shimmers in here are like a thicker, like they're sparkly, but they're kind of thick. You know, like they are, I gotta thin them out for what I like so far, but I gotta keep using this. There's a lot of mattes in here. And there's also, I don't know why she did this, but there's like a pressed glitter. We didn't get that weird cream shade, but we did get a pressed glitter. So I don't know. I still have to get my thoughts, but I wanted to at least get you swatches in case you were interested in this palette. The mattes look promising. It might be one to go check out in store and like swatch and see if you like the texture. Okay, and last for palettes, if you did want something fun, if you're like, I'm not boring like you, girl. <laughs> I want some color. I have this Danessa Myricks palette. 
palette. This is actually the one from last year. So this one's not out right now, but every year she does come out with a light work palette. This is the light work volume five. And I just wanted to throw out, if you're looking for some duochrome, some colorful shadows, I feel like Danessa Myricks does such a great job. And this year's palette is a little bit different. It can be like folded down. It's very colorful. I haven't seen it in person, but I just wanted to shout that one out. These palettes can be very expensive, but I do feel like they're very high quality. Danessa Myricks does color and iridescence and duochromes and just those shimmery shadows so well. And with the sale, it might be a nice opportunity to get it a little bit discounted. So I just wanted to throw that one out there. Even though I don't have the exact one that's out this year, I feel like when you have one, you know, I don't necessarily need that palette now, but I think it's a nice option for some colorful, almost kind of like indie type shadows at Sephora and kind of in the mainstream. Also, if you have that palette, let us know your thoughts on it. Do you think it's worth it or not? If you've tried it, that would be great. I'm sure if anyone else is looking for it. All right, we are on to lips. And of course, we're gonna be talking about lip balms, okay? Lip balms are everywhere. And it's kind of a fantasy for me. I mean, I've always been a lip balm girl. When all the liquid lipsticks were happening, I was just like, what are we doing? <laughs> my lips can't handle it. Like I had my dose of colors that I like, but man, I'm a lip balm girl and a lip liner girl and a lip gloss girl. So that's a lot of what's in here. I know the Summer Fridays gets a lot of hype, okay? So I'm gonna keep it quick. I think it's a good formula. It's a solid formula. It's a popular product. If you wanna gift this, I think whoever in your life would be like, oh my gosh, I have the thing everyone on social media has. Like it's a solid lip balm. And specifically my favorite one is the Ice Latte. I have a lot of them, okay? I have like every freaking color except for pop. Coffee, I think and iced coffee is just the best when it comes to scent it smells like it honestly smells more like caramel than it does like coffee but it's just so good very gourmand though I could see some people being like that's a little much for me the colors nice on it it's just an easy grab I also really like the pink sugar one that's probably my second favorite and I do want to warn you against the new hot cocoa one I was so excited for it but I find it's a little thinner so texturally it's not quite the same and also it's like sweet to the taste like on your lips which I don't particularly love because it tastes like chocolate pudding on my lips, which might be a plus for you, but I just wanna warn you about it. My number one recommendation is iced coffee, but in general, I really like this lip balm. Honestly though, probably the better formula, like I don't think it gets as much hype, it's getting it a little bit more, is the Ulla Henriksen one, okay? This one is so good. I think my favorite is strawberry sorbet, but again, I have like, I think every, almost every flavor. They just came out with a new Anina Bing collab, which I think is so nice. It has a little bit of shimmer in it and it doesn't have any texture. You can't feel the actual shimmer, so I love that about it. I'm still completely getting my thoughts on it. I've tried it like a few times, but I do like it overall. Anyway, the formula of this is definitely thicker than the Summer Fridays. It's so plush and just like hydrating. It's a lip peptide treatment. And I just feel like it wraps your lips in this really nice cushy gloss balm. It could be a little thick, but I don't find it to be like sticky or annoying. It just feels good, okay? It just feels good. You can feel the difference when this is on your lips. So I love this. And again, I gotta warn you against a few flavors. You you might like them so go in store if you really want to try them but the creme brulee it's a little buttery it's like a caramel buttery flavor it's a little much for me which is maybe surprising since I love iced coffee so much from summer Fridays but Anyway, the cream cocoa, cocoa cream, whatever, that one also kind of has a little bit of a blood taste to it. It has a little iron taste to it. I don't understand. Like, I don't know what's going on with those flavors. The colors of them are beautiful and maybe you're not as sensitive. Maybe you don't interpret them that way, but um, I just want to warn you against them because they're not my favorite. I wish they were though. I wish they were, but formula wise, all of them are great. All of them are amazing. Love, love, love this lip balm. And of course, another lip balm. This is the last like tube lip balm in here. So <laughs> don't worry, all my recommendations aren't these but I do love the Laneige Lip Glowy Balms. This is like a balm and a gloss together. So it's very shiny on the lips. It's thin, but still has a nice cushion to it. I also find with this formula, it actually kind of hydrates. So it wears really well throughout my full time wearing it. And if my lips are like chapped, I feel like this formula still does well for me where it, like it feels good still. It doesn't feel like too heavy. It's just nice. And it's one of the thinner lip balms that I think still has a nice amount of cushion and still feels satisfying on the lips and if you want like the look of a gloss but want the feel of a balm I think this is a great hybrid I have tons of flavors of these as well and although some of them have slight tints it's really more about the flavors I think my favorite is blueberry I also like the gummy bear one I like the berry and the grapefruit because they do have a slight tint to them but it's really quite negligible the amount of tint that you get from these it's really more
more going to just give you that glossy look and a little bit of smell as you put it on, which I really like. So check out blueberry if you're into kind of that artificial blueberry, but kind of sweet girly. It's nice. Okay. Now on to lip glosses. I wanted to just shout out these Too Faced ones. I know it's kind of a weird inclusion, but these are actually really good. The kissing jelly glosses are really like cushiony again. I feel like I gravitate to a similar feel on my lips. I want my lips to feel saturated with product, but in a way where like it feels like the product's gonna stay on my lips. It's almost creating like, I don't wanna say a film, but it's like kind of smoothing them and just like, yeah, creating a cushion, a plush feel on my lips. And that's what these do, but it has that glossy shine. I have the shade Bubblegum and I also have Cotton Candy, which they both smell and also have a little more taste. These are a little bit sweeter on the lips, kind of at the max, I guess for me, but I kind of love that. They're kind of fun. The Bubblegum one also has some shimmer in it, which I think looks really nice. And again, it's a shimmer that you can't actually feel on the lips, which is another gripe I have with so many shimmery lip glosses. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, are you putting these on your lips? Do you feel the grit? Who wants a gritty lip product? Like seriously, even the road, like the lip balms, have you tried those? So many of them are gritty on my lips. Like, I don't know what people are talking about. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's talk about a lip oil. This one from Merit is so good. And I am specifically talking about this shade. This is the shade Jeté. It does have that pH thing going on. So a lot of the times that can just be like hot pink. I know I'm not like the biggest fan of it overall, but this one is really great. I feel like the tint this gives that pink tint is the perfect amount. It's not too much, so I don't just get like hot pink lips. I feel like with this, I get that kind of like bunny tongue or whatever, like bunny nose. I don't know, that like really cute pink. That's what this gives me. It's beautiful, it just looks really nice. I love it with a lip liner. This is what I had on at the very beginning. I've been like layering products as I've gone this whole video, but I really love it. I tend to put this on at the beginning of the day and then I'll touch up with something else because if I layer this, it will get deeper in shade, which isn't necessarily bad if you want more pink, but I like to keep it just that little bit of life, you know, like that little bit of pink. Mm, so pretty, really love this. I've rediscovered that one and I can't stop wearing it. Even though we're in fall, I'm like, oh, I still wanna put that one on. If you're looking for a lip plumper, I wanted to mention this Cali Ray one. I know there's the Too Faced ones, the lip injections, which those ones are just classics. And I was thinking about it earlier today cause I put this on and I was like, oh, it's so nice. This doesn't have that like lip plumper smell to it. Do you know what I'm talking about? And kind of taste. The Too Faced lip injection lip plumpers have this, like, have such a nostalgic and just like specific smell and taste that I feel like is the equivalent of fake tan smell for lip plumpers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what fake tan smells like? You know that fake tan smell? It's not the same, but it's like the equivalent of that Too Faced lip plumper. Anyway, this doesn't have that, which is nice. Although again, it is kind of a classic and it, it does bring back memories every time I put it on. But the Cali Ray kind of sneaks up on you, okay? So the doe foot's a little different. It has a little shimmer to it. And this also feels really nice. It has that cushy feel that I like on my lips. It almost feels like a liquid balm, like not just a gloss, which I think is really nice, but this lip plumper creeps up on you, okay? You put it on, you're like, oh, that feels nice, like texturally feels really good, and you're kind of like waiting for it to work. Then it starts to work, and your lips slowly start to engorge themselves, okay? So you're really gonna get this almost kind of like, I don't know if vibrating is the right word, but like you just start to feel your lips kind of like not get agitated, but just fill with blood in a way or like if your lips were inflatable pool floaties they would start filling with blood like I don't know how to explain it but all right lip liners on I'm gonna dirty this wand up immediately it has some nice shine I can't feel any of the shimmer and I also don't feel like it's giving me like some type of iridescent look it's just pretty okay plumping I can feel it can you see it it just feels like my lips are filling with blood I can just feel it's like swelling you know what i mean and it's a little intense but it's not like too burny i can really feel it on the edges so like the edge here and the edge on the inside that like vermilion border is that what that's called i don't know that might be over here i don't really know all i know is like the wet dry border i can feel it a lot in those areas i feel like but it's definitely giving me some plump oh my gosh these lips feel plump baby okay it's a more unique <laughs> lip plumping feel at least to me and i feel like it definitely works it definitely plumps your lips and i don't know i think a lip plumper can be kind of fun you know what i mean like do you need plumper lips not necessarily but this one definitely does it it leaves your lips a little bit red not too much though because i don't find it to be like fire it's not like a stinging it's more like you can feel like 
a firmness because you're like, holy shit, like my lips are like literally filled with more blood than they normally are. Like that's what it feels like. I literally feel like it's the equivalent of like your lips getting hard. Like that's what I imagine it to be like, you know? So anyway, gotta shout it out. I do like it. It's my favorite lip plumper, I think, in my collection. For lip liners, we're gonna keep it fast, okay? I love a lip liner. If you're not using a lip liner, I highly suggest it. I just think it helps make your lips look like fuller and just nice. And I remember I did not use lip liner before, like when I was younger, I didn't even understand it. But now I'm like, just give me a lip liner. At least just a lip liner and then I'll, I'll make something work. There is a lot of activity going on, okay? LA Dodgers just won <laughs> the World Series and I can just tell you, it's been chaos. Like, that's us winning. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, I'll keep it brief. Makeup Forever, Lip Liner, Wherever Walnut. This is my fave. I have so many of these. I have like three, I think, right now. I just love this lip liner. The color is perfect for me. The formula is perfect for me. It's a wooden pencil, which is my preference. If you've been hearing about these Makeup Forever lip liners, like, the hype is real. I have a bunch of swatches, so hopefully it can help you if you're looking for the right color for you. But Wherever Walnut's definitely my personal favorite. It's like this perfect rosy mauve that has a a little bit of neutrality to it that lines my lips but isn't too much you know what I mean like it's a nice everyday kind of lip liner so love this one and then similar in formula I feel like and kind of color work of art from tower 28 this is also a nice affordable pencil I think it's like $15 I really love this one as well it does have a little bit more of that like wood pencil kind of smell and a little bit more of that kind of crayon taste but it's on the outside of your lips I just like the definition this one gives and both of these are very similar colors colors. Again, I love that wooden pencil. That's the way to go. I don't want something that's going to like lock down too much. I just want it to wear away gradually, have decent staying power for sure. And these are the ones that are like living in my purse. I'm using every day. Like I don't even think about it. These are definitely two of my go-tos. I also really love the Jones Road one. I know it's not a Sephora, but maybe I'll link it in the YouTube because I really love the shade Mauve from them. Mm, another one. Those are like my top three. Okay. We have finished the makeup portion of this video. I now I'm going to move on to some other categories because it's not only makeup. As much as like I feel like I love makeup, it can be nice to get some skincare, some body care, some fragrance, which I am gonna mention some fragrances. I do have a whole fragrance channel, but I picked three from the video that's gonna be going up over on that channel to mention in here, just in case you don't wanna go over there. I think these are three not to miss, so we'll go into fragrance. If you're specifically looking for a nice fall niche scent, something that's gonna be cozy for the holidays, that's gonna like get some good fall scent memories for you and also carry you into winter, Killian's Angel share I think is the way to go. This is a spicy warm gourmand. It's a little boozy. It definitely has some spice to it and to me it smells like ooey gooey like apple pie filling. It's so good. Mm, it is like so sweet. I think this is my third year. Maybe it's my fourth year of having this for the holidays and I'm finally starting to see a dent because I feel like you don't need a lot of this okay. You don't <laughs> You just spray yourself down. It's a great quality scent. It's gonna last you a long time, like throughout the day. You're not gonna need to reapply it. And it's also going to be heavy enough to withstand colder weather. So highly recommend getting your nose on this. In general, it's so nice that Killian's at Sephora because Sephora doesn't have a ton of niche brands. They just started carrying Montal, which is nice. But this is kind of my fall pick. If you were looking for specifically like a fall scent to try, I really love this one. For an everyday kind of scent and one that I'm gonna need to repurchase during the sale. Oh my gosh, I'm getting blinded by the light. Hopefully this looks okay. I've been here like hours at this point, just talking to you about all these products. <laughs> anyway, for like an everyday kind of scent, this one, you guys, I need to repurchase it myself. Look at this. <laughs> it's out. I'm like showing you an empty bottle, but this is Fleur's Vanilla Skin. This is so freaking good. I do feel like the perfume and the body mist are different. The body mist gives me more of like a creamy, rich, almost kind of smoky vanilla, whereas Vanilla Skin in the EDP is a little bit lighter, airier, woodier, it's sugary, but not too much. Like it's still an everyday scent as much as it's a vanilla and a gourmand. It's still somehow not overdone. So I feel like even if you're not like super into gourmands, I think you could still love this as long as you're willing to try out a vanilla. The seal is just so good on this. It kind of reminds me of like a toasted marshmallow or something, especially when I smell it on other people. I freaking love it. So obviously love this. I mean, the empty bottle tells you everything you need to know. And then the last perfume I wanted to mention is the Kaoli Silk Santal. 
What in the hell is going on? Okay, I really am getting chased around by the sun here, but we're just gonna keep rolling with it. We're gonna keep going. This is the Silk Santal. It's the wedding scent. It came out last year, sold out, literally wouldn't come back for a whole year. It like came back recently and like crashed the Sephora website. So it might be one to check out during the sale. It's a super likable scent. It has like a vanilla base, but I think there's like some champagne in here. So it's a little bubbly. It also has some fruitiness to it, but it's kind of girly. It's just a nice scent. I feel like you could wear this one year round as well and it's one that again I think is really likable easy to wear so might be one to check out and I also wanted to mention it just in case you were wanting it and it was sold out for the longest time it is back in stock but I don't know how long that one's gonna last to be honest I feel like that one's gonna go pretty fast in the sale. Okay I definitely want to mention a few of my skincare staples. Glow recipe dew drops do I need to say more? I love these things. I literally have gone through probably 10 plus bottles of these okay. I just feel like it's the best serum for my skin. <laughs> I prioritize moisture over everything. It's just the most important to me. My skin can be really sensitive. So with actives, I have to be a little careful. This does have niacinamide in it. So if you're sensitive to that, it's something to consider. But I really love this. It does leave a tiny bit of tack, but not too much on my skin. So it works not only like as a moisturizer, but I do like it kind of as a primer as well. I just, I love this. I don't want to go on and on about it. It's very hyped up on social media and I've talked about it like over and over and over again. But I love this serum. Me and my husband both use it. He has dry skin, I have oily skin, and we both love it. For an eye cream, I've gone back to my belief. This has been reformulated. It's the moisturizing eye balm, but I feel like the reformulated version is just as good, which doesn't always happen, and I'm just grateful, okay? I'm thankful. <laughs> I love this eye cream. It just gives me exactly what I want. Again, moisture. It's so just hydrating and like supple under my eyes. I use it for bed. I use it under makeup. It's the main eye cream I use. It's the one I keep going back to. I I just love this. I'm almost done. This is my second one and I would repurchase as well. So love this eye cream. Definitely my favorite. If you're looking for something that's just moisturizing under your eyes, but not too heavy, but also not thin and watery. For a cleanser, I just wanted to shout this one out. If you're looking for like a morning cleanse, it has like a green smell to it. It's kind of refreshing. I really do like this Youth to the People. I got a sample of it in an advent calendar last year and it was this little glass bottle and it lasted me a really long time and I really enjoyed it then. And Youth to the People sent me this this, but I probably would have purchased it again. I really do like it, especially again for my morning cleanse. It just really feels like it washes off all my skincare. Not that I need it off. I mean, I just was sleeping, but it just gives me a nice, fresh, clean start to the day. I love the pump on it. It's like a thicker cleanser, but it suds up in a really nice way without stripping my skin, but I, I still feel clean. So I really love this, although I really love. My favorite one is the one from uh, Hymish. I tried it from Yes Style. Oof, so good, $10. So that's like my overall great one and it's a great price, but I can't lie. I really like this cleanser too. Like it's a very nice cleanser. For an oil, I know who am I, but this Kiehl's I've had in my drawer for a while, okay? It's been unopened. I'm like, should I try it? Should I not? I don't know. Do I like oils? The Midnight Recovery Concentrate is so good. It's a very thin oil. It's like so thin. It's not thick in any way. I put this on at the end of my skincare routine. So it's like the last step and it smells good. It's kind of botanical. It smells like plants, which I really like, but this just does some magic. I don't know how to explain it. My skin, I just wake up with glowy, clearer, more even, like also less textured skin. Like it's just so good. I don't necessarily use it every single night, but especially going into winter, I know I'm going to use it even more. So I just wanted to shout this out. I am definitely not the skincare care expert by any means, but this has been amazing. I've like loved it so much. A skincare product I don't have, but I'm going to buy during the sale is from Dermalogica. It's this milk exfoliant, but it's like the light version. I'll put a picture of it up here, but I do like exfoliating my skin, but I have to be careful because I have very sensitive skin and oh my gosh. Okay. Can we make it through the video guys? Do you think we can do it? <laughs> anyway, I have very sensitive skin around my mouth especially. And so I don't want to be too harsh on it, but I also need a little exfoliating and I absolutely loved again the sample I had of that product I used it up and I felt like it really helped just calm my skin repair my skin barrier moisture barrier I just loved it so I'm definitely gonna pick that up and I just wanted to mention it if you were looking for something that was a very light exfoliator that one it's like a powder and then you add water to it to kind of create a paste or whatever consistency you really want and I think it has like oats so it's really calming and I, I really loved it for hair a product I don't have but I will be purchasing and I just wanted to shout it out for all the thin haired girlies out there who need some volume. The Orbe Volumizing Shampoo and Conditioner has just been my go-to. I love the smell. I think it gives me great volume. It just feels
feels nice and luxurious in the shower. And my hair needs all the help it can get, so I really love that. I was using the Gisu one, and I've completely used that up for now. And I like it in conjunction with a volumizing shampoo, but on its own, it's maybe a little heavy. I'll, I'll admit it, okay? I have dry hair because I do bleach it, but I also have just oily roots. So it is just a battle constantly to try to get the moisture I need, but also not weigh my hair down. At the end of the day, I like the Orbe, and if I can add in the Gisu every couple of washes, it is nice, but I would overall go with the Orbe. The dry shampoo I love is this one from Day. It's the third bottle I've gone through, so you know, I like it. It's non-aerosol, which is kind of nice, and you kind of just pump it into where you need to. I will say, be careful, take your time. My favorite way to use this is to put it in my hair before I do my makeup, do my makeup, and then kind of zhuzh it, and I feel like it gives me that volume, which again, really love, but also does soak up the oils. I just have to be careful I don't put too much in one place since it's not like a continuous spray. It just kind of pumps out and sometimes it can pump out a little bit much. And then you have like a lot of powder in one area which can kind of build up on the scalp. So just go slow and I do like really light pumps initially just to get a little bit of mist, not like the full blown thing. As the helicopter circle, um, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's intense for me. <laughs> I have two more products. We're gonna finish it out. We are getting through this. The Way St. Bart's Body Scrub, okay? If you've been here, you know I love it, okay? It's like a signature of mine. <laughs> I love this body scrub. If you're looking to gift something this holiday season, if you want a luxurious moment in the shower for yourself, specifically the scent St. Bart's, it's this beachy, beautiful, like summery scent, which I know we're going into fall, we're going into winter, but in the shower, when you're scrubbing up, you want to remember the tropical vacation you want to go on. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just so good. I highly recommend this scrub. And I also love it because not only does it feel luxurious, but it leaves you moisturized without feeling oily, which is just a pretty rare combination. Just highly recommend this scrub, but also just anything from Way in the St. Bart scent. I don't think you're going to go wrong. They came out with the body mist earlier this year. That's a great one. They also have a hair oil now in the scent. They have a body lotion. They have a body wash. I have almost all of it. It's so good. Highly recommend. And last, if you guys have ever wondered what's on my nails, what are these cutie little nails going on? They're the Glamnetic nails and they carry them at Sephora. They don't have the full line. I'm wearing, I want to say it's the tarot ones. This is from the Glamnetic website. I like always keep up with their launches and specifically this shape and like length is the short almond. That's my favorite one because I just feel like it elongates my fingers in a really nice way. But I just wanted to shout them out. They used to look like this. Now they come in packages that look like this, but this is the short oval. That's the other shape that I enjoy as well. I think they have both on the website on Sephora. Again, they don't have the full selection, but I know they have some new holiday ones that look really nice. And I just love the press on nails. These have like changed my life to be honest, cause I hate going to the salon. Anyway, I wanted to shout them out in case you wanted to try some press ons for the holiday season or just wanted to try press ons because I just love how girly they are. There's something that you can visually see. Like when I have my full face, of makeup done, I can't see my face. And I'm not necessarily checking in the mirror. I'm not like fussy necessarily like that, but I love that I can see my nails. Like when I grab things or whatever, like I get to just enjoy them and they have tons of fun colors. If you want to explore past what Sephora has, there's some at Ulta and then they also have tons on their website. Again, my favorite shape is the short almond, but the short oval is nice if you want something that's a little easier to use and not going to stop you from like getting <laughs> into product. And also whenever I go on vacation or I I know I'm gonna have like a more busy week or like I'm gonna be needing to use my hands a lot more. Not that I don't do everything with the longer nails. I mean, I'll just have things pop off if I have to and, and glue them back on if you know me. Then you know I'm like always gluing a nail on, but I really like the short oval if you want something that's a little less scary to start with. But I'm gonna end it here. I hope these recommendations were helpful for you guys. These are tried and trues. I don't think you're gonna go wrong with any of these if they seem like they're gonna fit your style, your preferences, all of that. I would love to know your recommendations down below because I will definitely be shopping the sale. I'm probably gonna place an order online, but I definitely wanna go in store. I just think it's so fun to actually swatch things, actually see it in person, make sure like colors are gonna match and all that. So if you have any recommendations, leave some for me, but thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope it was helpful. If you shop any of my links, thank you so much. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.